The start to any successful day is a well-balanced breakfast. Okay, so I got a busy day ahead of me. I'm trying to continually pumping up these videos because my channel is a little baby and I need videos out. So since so many people were asking, I'm gonna do a little tour of this guy right here. Problem is, it's a little filthy. Actually, it's very filthy. Yeah, there's there's weeds all over it. It's, it's gross. So I'm gonna go clean it. Then I'll do the boat tour. I'll do the rod and reel tour. We're gonna get on that. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you once this is sparkly, shiny, clean. Okay, well now we're back. Boat isn't exactly shiny clean, but it's much cleaner than it was. All right, we're gonna hop in. Since many people have, actually I'm not gonna hop in. Since many people request, I'm gonna do a short little boat tour. So, she is a 2003 18 foot little Stratus with a 2003 150 Yamaha VMAX. No jack plate, no power poles. Only one little seven inch Lorenz graph. This graph up front doesn't even work. Got a 65 pound thrust. Whoop. 65 pound thrust trolling motor. But yeah, I've had this boat out on, oh my God. I gotta stop doing that, I gotta flip the screen. I've had this boat out on three, four footers on Erie. I've had this boat all over the country actually. Won a couple tournaments in it. She's She's been good luck, but I'm just gonna go, it's a really simple boat, I'm just gonna go top to bottom. So obviously you got the troll motor up there. I was gonna put a recessed foot well in this winter, but never got around to it. So the graph doesn't work. Uh, right here, you got a rod locker in here. This'll fit uh, probably 15 of my rods, especially if we put rod socks on them. Got a, uh, a cold beam bump board to the fish tournaments a lot. In here, we got just a big, big storage thing. See, it goes way up. But uh, yeah, that'll fit basically all my tackle. I usually put all that in there. It's a little messy right now. But obviously the most important thing in this box, the cliff bars. No better, no better boat snack. Anyways, up in here we got, I keep all my life jackets, toolbox, ski goggles for when it rains. Huge. For when it rains, you need to get back to the ramp. Uh, extra rain gear, some microfiber towels, that's really all we got in there. There's my little doge. Say hi, Bella. It's a little wiener dog, she's hiding from the sun. <laughs> there she is, all right, yeah. We got fire extinguisher right here. It's just like a, oh, that's really dirty. That's just like a cooler. That'll keep ice for me for the day if I want to have drinks or something in there. Got some pliers handy. In here, this is just the glove box. Got full beams. G-juice for keeping fish alive. A neck thing if it's... How am I bleeding? Well, I don't know how that happened, but... Neck sock for when it's really sunny. I shouldn't have to say why I got those in the boat. <laughs> Electrical tape. Here's a little dashboard, very simple. That's where I keep the graph on the ram mount. Bench seating, which is actually really, really nice. I would prefer a single console, but I really like the bench seating. Then in the back, just uh, extra storage thing. I got a ski rope in there, which I kind of double as a rope for a ramp. Double two live wells. Oh wow, those really smell like crayfish. Um, yeah, that's not the best smell in the world. I should really clean that. Then in here is just a, uh, is a jumper cables. Jumper cables, spare prop that's in this box. Hydraulic fluid. There's a wood beam under there so I can change the prop. And yeah, and then that brings us to the back. Don't mind the mildew, the boat's 13 years old. There's an the oil reservoir, cranking battery two trolling motor batteries. 
dual bank charger and that about wraps it up now since that was going to be about a one minute video it's a very simple easy boat this is a great has been a fantastic starter boat for me to really learn everything about boating trailering all that but to kind of wrap this up i'm going to throw in my rod and reel arsenal as well just to kind of make this a full video round it out a bit so i get back to you with that okay the camera keeps turning off on me so i can't see but this is a wow that's garbage Anyway, this is a. So this guy right here is a 6'9, medium heavy, Kissler Helium, LTA stands for lighter than air. It's, it's, I think the rod's from like 2003, honestly, but it's first generation of these Kissler Heliums. They're super, super light, sensitive rods. I had a 7'6, that one was my favorite. That one snapped, setting the hook on a smallmouth of all things, but I got that paired up with a old school. Shimano Cronarch 51 MG. Show right there. 51 MG. This one also super super light reel. Don't exactly have it spooled up all the way. I, I broke off the other day, so it needs some line on it. But I got 15 pound fluorocarbon on here. Um, this is just my favorite all around flip and pitching setup. That if I'm not in too heavy a cover, I always opt for this guy. It's so light, I can flip and pitch it all day. Had it for like five years. It's never let me down. Now, if I'm pitching really heavy cover, weeded areas, I go for this guy. This is also a Kistler Helium LTA, same generation as that one, but this one is a 6.6 heavy. And I got this one paired up with a uh, Shimano Curato Bantam reel. These Now, all these show old Shimano reels, these are all from like 2003, 2004, and these are all Japanese, these are all from Japan. But I mean, you can, you can pick up these chronics. These are still pretty highly sought after. You can pick up these for, around 150, 175 bucks, but these green guys, these old Curados, these will go for like 50, 75 bucks, and they're, they're fantastic reels. I, I don't really have much problems with them. I uh, haven't really had much reason to buy new ones, even though they're 13 years old, but I got this guy on 30 pound Power Pro. You know, I, in my personal opinion, I usually think 50, 65 pound is kind of an overkill, especially for me, because I mean, I live in the Midwest. The biggest bass I'm gonna be catching is maybe a six pounder, and it's not like Okeechobee where I'm pitching heavy cover and need that 65 pound to cut through like big lily pad stems, stuff like that. So I've, except for the other day, I've never really had an issue breaking off with 30 pound ever. So I like the lighter, the uh, thinner diameter is easier to deal with, so I'm gonna stick with that. And uh, final flipping and pitching setup. This is a uh, seven foot, what is it? Seven foot medium heavy St. Croix Legend Elite rod. And uh, I got this paired up again with one of those Bantam Curados, the old green ones, but this one's got 20 pound fluorocarbon, and this is when I'm pitching in really heavy cover, like heavy brush, stuff like that. It's a little bit longer rod, it's much heavier setup to really horse those fish out of any cover. I got a swim jig on here right now, but I usually have a Texas rig or uh, a flipping jig, stuff like that. Next up, I got the rods that get the least amount of time in my hands, except for when I'm smallmouth fishing. Gotta get this. What is going on? Anyways, but this is a, uh, both my spinning rods are Fenwick Fluger combos. You know, this past, uh, like, nine months, I was a part of Fenwick's collegiate, like, earn your wings team, and uh, they sent us uh, a decent amount of cool gear, rods and reels that we got to choose from in order to take pictures and stuff with their products, stuff like that, so that's why I got my spinning setups from there. But this is a, uh, this is my tube jig rod, basically. It's a uh, seven, what are the specs? Seven, four, seven foot four inch medium extra fast tip. This is really this long rod is really meant for like slinging those tube jigs really really far. I got that paired up with a uh, Fluger MG Supreme spinning reel. Uh, I got 20 pound braid on here with an eight pound leader, eight pound fluorocarbon leader, and uh, yeah, that's my tube jig setup. That's really the only thing I use this rod for. I got a sink on here because I was fishing ponds, but anyways. Now this other one. Also Fenwick Fluger, this one is also, these, both these rods are Elite Tech Fenwick rods, I should have mentioned that, Elite Tech bass rods. Uh, this one's a six foot nine inch, medium, and uh, got this, what is this rod? This reel? This is just a Fluger President, this is honestly, I think this is a $60 reel, this is a great, great spinning reel for $60, I will say that. I wasn't overly impressed with the $150 uh, Supreme MG, is that what this is called, Supreme? Yeah, I wasn't overly impressed with that reel, but for the price point, but this reel, definitely recommend for $60. But again, 
I just have a little uh, wacky wacky hook on here, but this is my uh, rod that I go to whenever I'm wacky rigging, skipping under docks, using a drop shot, and uh, yeah, I mean, I. Whenever I'm fishing, I mostly opt for a base casting setup, so these really only get used if I'm skipping senkos under docks or if I'm smallmouth fishing. The rest of my rods are just more reaction style baits, so I'll go, I'll go through those quick. This one is a 6 foot 8 medium heavy extra fast tip G Loomis E6X. This is a fantastic, fantastic rod for the 180, 200 bucks, whatever the price point is. Uh, again, have another Cronarch 51 MG on that with, uh, I think this is 12 pound floor, but yeah, I use this reel for uh, mostly chatterbaits and spinnerbaits. I got a little chatterbait right on here right now, but yeah, on to the next. Now this one, I don't, this is an empty reel. I just fixed it actually. I uh, had to order some parts. The, uh, the reel handle and a couple screws fell off. So I needed to order parts and get this one fixed, but I'm mostly again, I might even use this rod to flip and pitch actually, or uh, throw a swim jig, something like that, but 51 MG with a, uh, I don't think I've ever used this rod actually. This is a uh, G Loomis 66 Heavy GLX. So, don't know what I'm gonna be using that one for. I should also mention that I got, I think, almost every single one of my, except for that E6X, I got almost all of my rods and reels uh, when this boat was purchased. You know, the reason they're all 13, 14 years old is that it came with the boat. The guy that was selling the boat, we got a fantastic deal on the boat. It wasn't terribly expensive of the boat. As you can see, it's not exactly decked out. It's just got all the essentials for a good day of fishing. But uh, all these rods and reels came with the boat. The guy was, I think he was getting out of fishing. All his tackle, rods and reels, he, it was like 20, 25 rod and reel combos. And they all happened to be really quality stuff. It was all these old Shimano reels, all these older G Loomis rods and stuff like that. And they've worked fantastic for me. I haven't had any reason to go purchase new gear. You know, that's that's kind of been a blessing on my part, but so I've, I've stuck with these old Shimano reels, the G Loomis rods for three or four years now, and they've I've not, not had a reason to switch. Now this is my nasty, nasty frog rod and reel. This reel, I really need to clean it. I'm putting it through some abuse this season. I got like scum caked all inside it. Haven't cleaned it yet, but now the rod. I absolutely love, love, love this rod for frogging. Uh, especially in the Midwest when again fish aren't too big the cover isn't terribly thick This is a this is actually another Fenwick rod that came with the boat, but I love this rod. This is a Fenwick HMX And this is a 6 foot 10 extra heavy power So this is a big big broomstick, but it's 6 foot 10 inches So it's really easy whether you're fishing from the bank up on the boat It's really easy to keep your rod tip down and work the frog. That's my favorite thing about this rod It's still super super strong and yet it's short enough where I can work it perfectly for everything I need to do. Now the reel I got on this is just another one of those old green Shimano Bantam Curados. Got a 30 pound braid on here. And I honestly, it's it's been at least a year since I've ever broken off on a, on a frogfish. I can't honestly can't remember the last time I've broken off on a frogfish. Only using 30 pound braid. Again, I think that 50, 65 pound is a little overkill. This 30 pound a lot easier to cast, a lot easier to deal with, and I don't, I don't really see myself breaking off much of ever. So this is what I'm sticking with. This is what works for me. Last couple of rods, I'll just go through real quick. This is my uh, top water like popper and walking setup. I've got a uh, seven foot medium heavy G Loomis IMX with another one of those greeny Shimano Curados. Just have a Zara Spook type bait on there right now. I think this is 14 pound mono as well. That's my only reel with mono. I only use it for floating top waters. Um, this guy right here, this is my favorite rod to use. In the spring, in fall, I am 100, 100, 100% gonna use this setup in a day of fishing. The reason being, this is my jerkbait setup. You know, I love jerkbait fishing. That's my favorite, favorite way to fish. I love fishing for, for smallmouth, largemouth. I've just grown to really love the, uh, love the technique and it's really produced for me. So, my jerkbaiting setup. I have a 7 foot medium heavy G Loomis GLX with a fast action tip. Got that paired up with a, uh, I don't know what year this is from, but this is this is the only reel I have that was this type. This is a, uh, this has been my favorite reel for, I haven't cleaned it, done anything with it three, four years, and I know it's at least 10 years old, and it's performed flawlessly for me the entire time. This is a, just another Shimano Curato, but it's a 201 DPV. And I know it's a 5 to 1 gear ratio, this is just perfect for for jerk baiting, I like for whatever reason I like a. This is a much bigger profile reel. I like the bigger profile when I'm jerk baiting. It's just what I've gotten accustomed to. What's confident for me. Now this one I just got a. This is just a spinnerbait rod. I got a 
six six heavy this is for like really short uh accurate casting to like lay down stuff like that and uh let's see i got this this is also another reel i got through that uh fluger fenwick thing and this is a uh Sup fluger supreme mgxt flu magnesium reel i'm actually going to be giving this is the reel i'm going to be giving away once i hit 5,000 subscribers brand brand new reel I've, I've used it like twice i just i just haven't found much use for it so uh i mean it, it's a great reel i haven't used it enough to get a full opinion on it but it's just always been sitting in my basement so for this is the guy i'd give away at 5,000 subscribers so keep on the lookout for that my last two rods that I'm going to be covering are both my shallow cranking setups. They're both the same exact setup, so I won't go too far into depth with it. But they are both G Loomis 66 medium uh, crankbait rods. These red crankbait series rods, and uh, have them both paired up with these little Shimano Curato 51 FGs. These are just absolute perfect, per perfect, super light, close distance shallow cranking reels. Like I can, I can throw this if I need to. I can throw it a distance down some riprap. But it's perfect, what I love it for, it's perfect for those really close distance, accurate casts down, lay down, stuff like that. And this rod tip, I mean, it's, ah, you can't really see, but, well, that was a big time fail, but these rods bend tremendously. I can't tell you how many times they've saved my rear end just by the parabolic bend in these things. It just bends in half. And for crankbait fish, we need to keep, need to keep those treble hooks pinned. It helps tremendously. And the second one, you know, same thing, just got... Same exact rod, same exact reel. Both have 12 pound floral on it. If I need to go a little bit deeper, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it down to 10 pound floral, but usually I don't need to be doing that. And I just have like a Lucky Craft square bone here and a KVD 2.5 right there. Oh, you're really wet. You're laying on my wet carpet. All right, but hope you guys enjoyed. I know a lot of you guys were asking for my boat rod and reel setups. It probably wasn't the most exciting video in the world, but for those of you that were curious, these are the uh, this is the setup and how I'm getting out on the water recently. So, yeah, you want to say bye, Bella? She's a little camera shy, a little wiener dog. Say bye, Bella. Bye.